Greeting Shining Bulls and Shining Bears and welcome to this, the sixth episode of the Crypto Astrology Podcast. We're going to take a look at what this week holds for Bitcoin and Ether price. But first, please always feel welcome to check out the Shining Bull website where I have all kinds of offerings for all suns, from a trading signal service and portfolio reports to Vedic Astro Cartography, a partner's reading, a one question service, as well as several books and book bundle deals. If nothing is within your price range, then don't worry, simply follow me on Twitter and make sure to get notifications for this podcast right here as I'm giving out a lot of free information on both of these. Now let's look at this week in Bitcoin and Ether price. I, the astrologer, live in Newfoundland, so all of this is in Newfoundland time, which is its own unique time zone in the world. On Sunday early morning, when the new moon becomes degreeically exact, a downward trend should initiate. I see this downward trend continuing, generally speaking, through to July 1st. And you can see more about that on my recent video, which is titled Financial Astrology Works. Um, Although Saturn will have turned retrograde on Saturday, the market will only really start responding to this celestial information on Sunday early morning, when Moon passes the degree of the Sun at the beginning of Gemini. Monday, very early in the morning, there is likely to be an upward movement when Sun enters Scorpio in the Navamsha, but this up move is likely market manipulation by specific players. After that, I see that we are down except for a period of about four hours during the late afternoon, again Newfoundland time, remember, to evening when there can be a convincing rebound up when Mars enters Aquarius in the Navamsha. Next up, on Tuesday, as Moon enters into Cancer, a sign which is loaded up with celestial significance currently, I predict a downward movement which should last throughout the day. Wednesday is interesting then because from the early morning into the afternoon, um, again Newfoundland time, Jupiter's um, shift into Bharani is going to create some good news about the future of of the crypto industry and this can fuel an upward movement. However, after that I see us continuing down again as Venus's position in the sky starts to exert more influence over the collective consciousness. Thursday is a mixed day. The morning should show an upswing due to Moon's relationship to Mars in the sky, but then we move down. But then again we move up during the afternoon as Mercury's entrance into Virgo in the Navamsha increases feelings of optimism about the future. And then still again in the evening we head down again when Mars starts transiting Bitcoin's natal Mars. But then yet again, we rebound up when Moon enters into Leo. Again, remember, all of this is in Newfoundland time. That's a very large island province of Canada with its own time zone, where I, the astrologer, am physically located. So next up on Friday evening, a significant downward trend can start when Moon starts transiting in opposition to retrograding Saturn. And then... However, Saturday shows an upward movement starting early morning when Mercury enters into Gemini. Okay, so I just want to say before we go on that this week has a lot of surprises. Because while Saturn is retrograding, a lot of issues are being solved. And nonetheless, I do not see a clear bullish reversal initiating until July 1st. However, Um, And again, remember that recent video titled Financial Astrology Works, which you can check out to see more details on this. So, nonetheless, traders will likely be able to take advantage of the rapidly changing sentiments this week. And besides that, in the longer term, the industry is going to benefit a lot from things that are starting to happen this very week itself. And also... You'll notice in the video that I keep mentioning, um, Financial Astrology Works, that so Saturn is retrograde for a lot longer than just July 1st, but July 1st is where I see the bullish, um, the bullish trend 
having its beginnings, okay? So that's before the end of Saturn's retrograde. So we can't really say that, I mean, this retrograde is actually very good for the industry, in fact, okay? And probably for your personal lives too. Um, okay, so um, now let's talk about um, two news items from the past week. And oh, before I go on, just like I said, traders can really take advantage of this uh, upcoming week. And um, so that was a weekly for forecast. But for the intraday, intraday traders amongst you, I have a signal service and it's quite good. I use it myself and I now have wildly reduced part prices and I've also created bundles so you can get special deals by buying the books along with the signal service so you can get all the context you need um, about the larger patterns at play but also about what's happening within the day for my intraday traders that's for those of you who are placing several trades within the same day okay next let's talk about two news items from the past week um, first we need to talk about BlackRock's proposed Bitcoin ETF BlackRock is the world's biggest asset manager behind the iShares ETFs, which, which some of you may invest in, and they are also, of course, in the S&P 500. Now, on Thursday, June 15th, BlackRock filed an application with the US, United States Security and Exchange Commission to register a spot, BTC, a spot B Bitcoin ETF. This is super interesting because BlackRock has a very high approval rate with the SEC for their ETS, as you can imagine. And where many have failed thus far to, to register a Bitcoin spot ETF specifically, there is a lot of buzz about this one due to BlackRock's historical success rate with the SEC. And furthermore, I find it personally interesting and promising that Coinbase is BlackRock's chosen Bitcoin custodian. I'll talk a little bit more about that now uh, coming up. But so first of all, let's see what was happening in the sky on Thursday, June 15th, when BlackRock made its filing. And by the way, happily for me, the astrologer, I even have the exact time of the filing as it is on the application. So let's see. Sun had just entered into Gemini and Moon was newly in Taurus. But as you know from my recent video, Financial Astrology Works, I keep mentioning it, when Mars entered into Gemini on Sunday, March 12th, is when we sprung out of this cycle's low, never to return, thus far, effectively exiting the gravest bear territory. We've seen this cycle. And what's, big, uh, what's fascinating is around this time is when Coinbase started to get very feisty in their fight against the SEC's various unfair acts against us as an industry, along with the whole industry actually beginning to fight back really hard at that moment. And now, with Sun transiting in the same area, we see this development with BlackRock, who would have... Uh, who would, who will be having Coinbase custody their Bitcoin uh, for their ETF. So now, because Mars, which is the crypto industry in this case, fought very hard. And also, you know, like Mars is the crypto industry also because the fact of the matter is that the industry is made up a lot. There's a lot of young men uh, young cis men in our industry um, fact okay there's a lot of testosterone in our industry so that's why Mars often represents our industry um, now because Mars fought so hard at the start of the sign of Gemini back then now Sun the most powerful member of society um, or some who represents the most powerful members of society, those people who Sun represents or entities such as BlackRock, for example, are step stepping in to further enable our fight, like as Sun has entered into that same spot in the sky. Okay, so furthermore, did you know that at the very end of this year, Jupiter will turn direct, less than one degree away from where Jupiter was when BlackRock made the filing on the 15th. 
Jupiter at that moment was at 12 degrees and 16 degree minutes of Aries. Furthermore, when Mars trines this degree from Leo is when Mars will simultaneously oppose retrograding Saturn and that happens on Thursday, July 20th, so much sooner. So what I see is that Thursday, July 20th, there is going to be some very promising news regarding the Black uh, the BlackRock Bitcoin Spot ETF. And when Jupiter turns direct at the very end of this year, at the end of December, that ETF will already be live. Because this filing happened at such a key moment, activating degrees which I already predicted would cause big Bitcoin price moves on July 20th and December 30th, respectively, you'll be able to see it if you have the books, I see that the BlackRock ETF will be key in the coming Bitcoin bull run. And it is definitely not a coincidence that the name BlackRock begins with the color which is associated with Saturn, black, and that the word, then comes the word rock, which is hard and compact uh, as a physical object, and that that's also uh, comprising of traits of Saturn, who is cold, hard, and of a condensing nature. So like I have always been telling you, Saturn loves Bitcoin in this sense, okay? Um, Saturn is good for our industry um, and is enabling it in a big way. Next, I want to discuss as our next topic, um, what, so you see those simple things are not a coincidence and that's how reality works. Uh, what I just told you is a great example. Okay, so next I wanted to discuss what is up with Gary Gensler. So Gary Gensler is the current chairman of the United States SEC. And when the moon was full in Jeshta Nakshatra on Sunday, June 4th, it activated Gary Gensler's natal Saturn and Venus, who are in that nakshatra. And in the days surrounding that full moon is when Gary Gensler began demonstrating even more extreme actions, um, responding to Coinbase's legal filing against the SEC for regulatory clarity in a strange, non-committal manner, charging Binance on 13 different counts aggressively. Now, before I go on, I would like to state that as an astrologer, I have always seen that Gary Gensler has been acting out of a true desire to do what's best for civilization as he sees it. However, although I do not want to discuss this extensively, Gary Gensler is undergoing two major transits on his natal chart, which are likely to take him out of power very soon out of his current position of power. I see that by the end of this year, he will no longer be the SEC chair. And I will not discuss these transits, but any astrologer would likely see the same thing, and it's very obvious. Um, I would say that in the middle of July, you will already see clear indications of this, and strangely, the BlackRock ETF application is likely to benefit from this as it, uh, as the same Mars transit is what's going to be at play, okay? Um, so, and that's, that's like I said, mid-July, when you start to see signs of what is going to end up happening, okay? So I personally wish uh, this chairman the best, as I also see that it is likely that after leaving the SEC, he will probably take up some other prominent advisory role, which will likely be either advising crypto or AI. I'm hoping it's the latter, AI, but it will be whatever the planets decide, not me. I am simply an astrologer telling you what I see. Again, I wish him the best, um, but that's just what I see. and. Um, I'm pretty sure about that, okay? So um, I guess the fact is, is that we just need to let things play out and we need to wish well for everybody, uh, including this chairman, because um, people are different and some people have, everybody has a blind spot and uh, this person do, has tried to do his best as he sees it. Truly, I see that as an astrologer. And I also see that he has some uh, certain traditional kind of um, mindsets um, that show up on his chart, actually. And maybe that's why he hasn't been able to um, act, uh, you know, more um, 
running with the moment in this um, matter of our industry but let's all wish him well and uh, just wait and see everything is going to get better for us and hopefully for him also thank you see you next week